let's get to this because not only do we have a lot of parents on our own social media uh, questioning this, but it was all over my Facebook. Schools all across the country are on high alert today over a disturbing TikTok threat calling for students to commit acts of violence. So it's unclear how the trend started or what the original post said, but it seemed to reference school bombings or shootings on December 17th, which is today. Some schools increased security but stayed open while schools in states like Texas and California decided to close. So far, the FBI says none of the threats are credible. TikTok put out a statement saying it's working with police, but they found no evidence of the threats originating or spreading on the site. So let's take this beat by beat because just when I saw it on Facebook alone, I had just dropped off Sophie oh to school. My God. So I dropped her off. I went home and I saw it all over Facebook. People saying I'm not sending my kids to school. And I was like, what did I just do? What's happening? Right. So you're a parent of three. When you read this, did you think differently about your kids, especially being in California going to school today? I didn't think differently. When I saw all those states we highlighted that took kids out of school, I, when I looked at it, it seems like we're using like a butcher knife to handle a problem that a scalpel should be used for. I don't know if this should be every kid in every school. I think when we have a credible threat like we did in Oakland, Michigan, that student, which was identified, should be handled in a certain manner. But the problem is we don't have a manner. We don't have a protocol. That kid was labeled as a, as a possible uh, threat. He was addressed as that. And then he was allowed to go to class. And we saw what happened. So I think instead of taking everybody out of school, let's take the kids that should be out of school, uh, should, are threats to the school, to take them out. And we also play the blame game afterwards, after people get hurt mm -hmm. or anything. And we're like, okay, what could have been done? It's the school district's fault. It's the parents' fault. Like the Crumblies are being charged in that Michigan case. And so when you see something like this on TikTok, which is a very valuable social media tool that's really used for communication, especially amongst kids, how serious do you take it? And since Kinsley's not in school yet, you know, I'm not thinking about this as probably as much as you guys are, but I can't imagine seeing this and saying, okay, should I be a helicopter parent or should I send her to school? Knowing that this probably happens more often than not since I'm not monitoring TikTok every second. Yeah. What do you think, Sam? I will, this morning, you know, I was very, I mean, your children are your most prized possession, right? And of course, the rational part of me was like, I'm, Sophie's at a preschool, she's fine. But especially here in Colorado, we've had so many different shootings, mass shootings, school shootings. And so, yeah, there was a, a split second right then and there that I was like, oh my God, what did I just do? And then you start, your mind starts to race. Will I regret this decision? Do I go back and pick her up? And I continued to look at what TikTok said. They said that there was no credible threats. So when this was running rampant, my question to you, Tori, is, should TikTok uh, monitored or monitor better and then when they see things like that, they shut it down? I think TikTok is actually, and I say this being uh, the eldest of the millennials, um, is quite good at noticing and shutting down any threats of violence. They've done more so, in my opinion, that you've seen with a Facebook but or let's say a enough? Twitter. I think we're talking about it and nothing has happened. We've always asked for prevention. We just got it right now, today. There was a threat, they told it, some kids stayed home, some kids didn't. We literally but asked for that's, more info on that. Is that the plan? Because you know, I'm thinking about a yeah, young, a young Sophie and a young right. Kinsley. Let's play it b both ways. Okay, you hear there's a threat, you double back and you go pick her up from school. Okay, so now there was no threat, no shooting, that's great. But now you've instilled in your daughter's head right. that you are dropping her off at a dangerous place. So is that how, the impression traumatic. you want to be from school? That's traumatic, right? Or option B, you let them stay in school and something, God forbid, does happen and you toil with that for the rest of your life. So what do you do as a parent? I'm asking, I really want an answer. But I don't know. A lot know. of times with these mass shootings specifically, we see people go to social media and literally basically scream out loud, I'm about to shoot up a place. I'm about to do this. I'm going a little crazy. Or they do I'm, a manifesto. I'm, right, yeah. whether, mm -hmm. a manifesto, whether they're older or younger, we see people letting people know, even young kids in different Reddit Especially chats and young things. Kids, exactly, yeah. so if we don't take it seriously or just leave it up to TikTok to police the whole situation, that seems kind of ridiculous. I I mean, I, I am all about hands off of these social media companies and letting them run their business as follows. But when mm. it becomes like um, a safety thing for yes. our kids, like maybe there needs to be some kind of advisory committee. Regulation. It needs to be regulated. And I've said this over and over again, and it's gotten a really, a lot of people aren't happy with when I say that. A lot of people were, will write in and say that is a slippery slope, uh, big government, get you know, whatever they need to say, I don't care. When it comes to threats, even if it's one of these false threats and it's just a kid in their backyard trying to get likes, 
something needs to be done. I'm not saying that we go arrest children. I'm not for that, but there needs to be stiffer consequences. If you are going to be responsible enough to have a social media site, we need to know who you are. We need to know where you live. And I know that's not what people want, Tori. You used to always go against me on that. No, but, but you've changed. You? You've, I've said you've made my thinking evolved. And why do we see Mark Zuckerberg in a Senate seat a lot? Because the Senate agrees with you, Sam, because people do want more regulations because it's gone a little wild west. So uh, you have turned my mind a little bit more towards we might need to regulate some. All right, well, good conversation.